All right, welcome to the Warriors Way on UKN Studios. My warrior this week is Teresa. Say good morning, Teresa. Hello, everyone. Good morning. All right, we're going to get to her in a minute. If you, Again, we're at UKN Studios. If you've not checked out our website, go to spiritualwarfareunit.com, and in the right corner, you're going to see these three little lines. Click on those, hit Struggling. We're going to be adding uh, Catholic charities uh, to our list of people in case you're struggling or if you know someone that's struggling. So if they're looking for food or clothes or baby formula or whatever, you go on those lists, you click, you give them a call, and and then if you know someone who is struggling, you can go there and you can be the person that brought them the good news and be part of our spiritual warfare unit helping others. All right. So Teresa Hurley is from Catholic Charities and from Genesee County. And uh, how long have you been working with them? I have been with Catholic Charities for just over two years. Okay. So kind of a newbie, really. Well, kind of, yeah. Not, so you didn't work with them before? No, I have not. No, goody, I, goody. No. All right. So we want to get your background. So what we do here is we find out who you are, where you're from, where you came from, All right. why, what you're doing, and what you're doing next. So where did you? Uh, where were you born from? Uh, well, I actually was uh, born in Detroit. Really? And, yeah. And then my dad and my mom were brought up to the Flint area. Uh, my dad's from high school friends bought a, a beer distributor, and they put my Ooh. dad to work. So, okay, so he moved from Detroit to Flint. Yes. To yes. do beer. Yeah, he's outstanding. I know, right? So uh, good and Catholic up, job. It is good <laughs> Irish Catholic job. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, and then uh, he retired there uh, after twenty some years. And all right, so when what year was that when 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 he moved up here? Uh, it would have been nineteen seventy six. So oh, bicentennial. I was just seven years old. Yeah. Okay. So I just and gave my age away. So you guys are all good. I don't do math. That's complex, and you got to add and yeah, right? carry the two. It's like twenty six. So, <laughs> so yeah, about twenty six now. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what did your mom do? Was she? Uh... Uh, my mom was home. She is. Uh, she's actually an MS patient, so she was unable to work. Oh wow. Okay. Was diagnosed like early on? Yes, or? right okay. after my sister was born. So she's had it for over fifty years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Actually, that like congratulations. Uh, yeah. You had it for over 50 years, right? Yeah. That's actually pretty That's, awesome. It's pretty amazing. Very yeah. rare. And, and functional? Yes. Wow. Uh, for the most part. I mean, she's in a wheelchair, but she's still, Well, how old is she now, though? Uh, my mom goes, you're going to do that, right? She's 75. Listen. Yeah. I'm probably not going to hit that number, so that's that's phenomenal, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So, so we did they like grow up in in Michigan? My mom and dad are both from Detroit. My okay. dad was actually um he did his time in the service and then he came home and he went into the seminary. And then All right, which branch? <laughs> he was an army guy. Oh, their food is so bad. Yeah. Oh god, so, it's terrible. I would have gone in the seminary after he Yeah, that food he too. went to the <laughs> seminary and then he was real close to signing the papers as they say, but um mm-hmm. That didn't happen, obviously. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's one of those rules things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank God for so, that, right? Yeah. And then, all right. We, so then he went into beer distribution. He did. <laughs> yeah, he he had his degree to go into teaching, and his buddies brought him in to um to run the warehouse for him. So. I would have loved to have got that story. So listen, you can be you can be a pastor, or. Yeah. You can sell beer, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, and that's yeah. a, and for an Irish person, that's a tough call. Being yeah. being an Irish person, Walsh and O'Rainey, that's yeah. my. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, very See, very got the Walsh Irish there too. Oh yeah, yeah, all the way back to the Bowman eleven hundreds. I'm oh, very much a nerd. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's going to be my story here in a minute. You'll you'll love it even more. <laughs> all right, so so you came to Flint where. Now, where did you go to school at? Well, originally, yeah, when we moved up here, we lived in the Beecher area. Ooh, so did I. um, We went very nice, isn't it? I know. Don't you love your councilman? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not anymore. So we lived there for a couple years, and uh, then we moved out in the country. So I moved out towards Otisville. Oh wow! So So that is the yeah, it's out in the the sticks. Yeah. All right. So how long was the transition between? Like Beecher to Otisville. Was it uh, quickly we, were here, we were here two years, and I, oh, okay. we had started at school at St. Mary's in Mount Morris, and then of course. Uh, finished there, and then went on to Powers. Okay, so. and that's like eighth and the ninth grade, right? 
Uh, in yeah, the night. So, is there any like developmental things as you're growing up from like from like being being seven to like because you got your friends, you know, you're in that mm-hmm. that tweeny. Yeah. Kinda, so, any, anything happened that is like uh, helped make you who you are? Oh, I think so. Uh, first of all, going through all Catholic school is one thing, right? Um, but is it? Besides that, I would say <laughs> that you know, growing up in the country and my mom um, not always having feeling good. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to, I had an older brother and a younger sister and the three of us were like the three musketeers. So we went everywhere together. Mm-hmm. And although we had a pool there, all of our friends lived about eight miles away. And this is something you'd never see today, right? Yeah. You we would just it. get on our bikes and ride into town yeah. into Mount Morris. And, you know, I, I just still to this day, I'm like, do you want us to write a note or anything in our pocket? No, you'll be fine. And it's just, you yeah. know, and that was just the way the, yeah, you know, like the way of the tell, world. When I tell my kids who have kids, uh-huh. it's like, yeah, we just like, you knew to come home when the lights come on. Right. Like everybody knew. Yeah. And they're like looking at me like I'm crazy. And uh-huh. I'm looking at them like you're you're crazy. Like yeah. you're way too stressed out about this. You just you no, know, you have to every second of every day, you have to know everything. And I'm like, you don't. You really don't. Yeah, but it is so terrifying. I mean, now you know the I'm thing mom, that's got me nervous is like being an old man. Uh-huh. And then they're like I GPS your phone oh, and you're yeah. trying to sneak and they know where you yeah. are. And- you said that you were out, uh, but you clearly, uh, <laughs> were not what you have to say. And at 70, I'm going to be like, look, I don't, I don't actually care what you think right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> know, you get right? caught and you get yeah. busted, you know, and you're looking at your daughter and she's like, you know, well, that's better than ours. <laughs> ours show up where we are because they know it's a free meal. <laughs> you know, they'll that's get awesome. there. <laughs> They're like, oh, I knew you were here. I tracked you. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> like, oh, I guess we're buying. You're like, listen, how do you shut that part <laughs> off? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. How did you do it? Like, I'm at the point, I'm the old guy now. That's when my daughter tells me something. I'm like, here. Yeah. Do it. Exactly. Like, I want that. Like, Make show that me work. how that works. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, you're going to uh, Catholic school. So, you grew up pretty, pretty just normal. Yeah. Childhood. Just normal. Like, like, we had a pond in our front yard and. We would play in the pond, and I remember coming out with leeches attached to me. I was just about to ask. Yeah. And I was the only one, and, you know, if my sister and my brother, God rest his soul, was here, they would laugh at and say, everything always happened to Teresa. You know, yeah. it was like, I was the only one that came out with leeches, not them, yeah. You know, me. I had the same thing. We had a creek, and I came out with leeches, and my sister's like, you know those things sense evil, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, well, you know, good to know. <laughs> That's disturbing. And now that we got that out of the way. I guess But she was same, 12 and thought she was hilarious, and I was eight. Oh, I yeah. Those are some good times, right? Yeah, right. You know those older sisters. <clears throat> so, I, yeah. Yeah, they can be. They can be and the evil. younger ones. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. So, all right, so you're going into high school. So were, you were a shy person, you're an outgoing person? No, I was, I was always outgoing, I think. Yeah, um, tomboyish. Uh, yeah, I was a sports girl, I, for what sure. What was your sports? Um, in grade school, I was basketball, softball. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got into uh, high school, I played basketball for one year, and then I went actually into track where I threw shot put and disc. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anything of worth to report there? Yeah, I was second in the state two years in a row. I, I could see a little bit of a side smile there. Yeah. Yeah, I like to talk about my nerdery with winning championship in soccer. Oh, well, I was, that's good. I, I was a high-level nerd, yeah. That's and oh, the other highlight of that would be that I got hit in the in the mouth with uh, in the chin with a disc. Okay, that was going, that was being thrown. That was thrown. So it was somebody chucked me. a disc at your face. No, nope, not intentionally. They let it go a little too late, and the whole the whole crew. If you ever wait go a minute, to these. wait a minute, you can't just say <laughs> I got hit in the face or something without setting that. Okay, so they're in the circle. They're in the circle and there was a long line. So it was a So huge, where are you? It's a county meet and I was like number 10 in line. So you're way back. Yes. So they have, if you'll look at them, if you ever see like shot put and disc, especially I do, I, disc, I, I, there's usually a fence around yeah. the disc. In this particular case, they did not have one. And, but we were behind what should have been behind them. Mm-hmm. But when she let it go, she let it go too late. And I heard a heads up, which is the worst thing you could say to anybody. You should have just said, jump, you know, down. Do what? Yeah. So I looked and I got clipped right in the jaw, just below my teeth. Oh, lucky you. Very lucky. Yeah. And, and just above my neck, because I learned the yeah. next day that there's been two accidents that same year where somebody had their teeth knocked out and the other person died because they got hit in the throat with a disc, which it obviously oh. would kill you. 
Yeah. So that was a little, my jaw just ended up behind my ears. So that's all. That's so that it. was just, and you were how old when that happened? Oh, I was 16. Oh my God. A lot of pain. You think? <laughs> you think? For that sure. is seven, like girls, like I had girls, like they would not take that well. Uh, like, how did you, I you was, just walked it off? Like, yeah, no, I broke my jaw. So. I, I, cla I collapsed and then, but I couldn't talk because my ears, you know, my jaw. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm not talking about that, but like, clearly you were in pain. I'm talking about like, how did you mentally handle like 16 and your jaw? I actually was fine. I pulled, So you walked it off. I, You're I like, yeah, whatever. My, I pulled my jaw out. We went to the hospital uh, ah. and then um, the next day I was throwing again. The next day? Mm-hmm. Did they wire it and all that? No, they didn't have to wire it. It's just, it's between my, I don't even know what they call that, but all the cartilage between your upper jaw and your lower jaw are gone. So I was very fortunate. Wow. And so the next day you're like, yeah, I just walked it off. Well, I was going towards States and I wasn't going to let that stop me. Well, so. yeah, because, you know, I just got hit in the face I, with a disc. And it hurt, yeah. And, of course, my brother and my sister just thought that was the funniest thing. Of ever. course. I <laughs> Like, there's, I'm trying not to, I keep, that's why you keep seeing me smile. I'm like, I can't say that joke. I, I can't say that joke. But it's like, it, just, uh, <laughs> it was. It just dropped me. <laughs> like a sack of potatoes, right? And then you're like, you can't say it, because being your sibling, I would want to rag on you. And then you're like, wow, uh, she's really hurt. Like, yeah. And, uh, and then after you, like, get better, it's like, dude, you just got hit in the face. Well. And with a disc. It, it was funny because my dad was there. He had just gotten there. And the coach was like, you know, calling my dad over. And he's like, you're going to have to take her to the hospital. And he goes, he, he calls me Tess. He says, Tess, are you okay? And I said, Dad, it really hurts. I can hardly talk. He goes, she'll be fine. And I'm like, and the coach is like, no, you need to take her to the hospital. <laughs> Those are the good old days, right? Yeah, just right. Just rub a little dirt on it. You'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. When we go to funny stories, I got one there. Just remind me. It's my dad's story. Just remember the word arrow. And okay. And we'll get back to it. All right. So so your high school years, you're going up and you did, you're doing that. So you graduated when then? Uh, 1987. 1987. All right, yeah. just food for thought. Who was who was top of the charts back then with music? I oh mean, new gosh, girls, new I girls don't in your know. Music. I don't know. You was know that me. Was that Madonna ish? It could have been probably like late eighties. Yeah. And I was yeah. like an expert. Normally, a, like my Carlisle. sister would be like, "Oh, it was this one," and it depends on which one. <laughs> Pop charts top forty, or, or and I'm like, I just I just wanted a song. Probably even Prince at that time. Ooh, right. Honestly. See, all right, purple. All right, yeah. So. All right, so you graduated in 1987. Did you go directly to college after that? I did not. Um, I uh, I decided to take the first semester off, and I got a full time job. I worked at a day not not a daycare, a group home for the developmentally disabled. No so kidding. I did that for what would have been the equivalent of a semester. And what what did you think of that? I loved it. Tell me why. Um, you know, I I think when you can, I, I've always been kind of that nurturing person. Um, and I think when you can work with people that have been dealt a hand less fortunate than yours, yeah. uh, it just makes you appreciate one, who you are, what, what gifts you've been given. But two, I think we all have a responsibility to take care of each other. So it's always all been right. like that. That is a perfect spot to take a break. If you've not checked out um, Catholic Charities, their website is uh, ccsgc.org, CC Catholic Charities. Uh, services, Genesee County, ccsgc.org. You can check them out on the break. And uh, if you haven't gone to spiritualwarfareunit.com to check out to help out other people, please do that, do that now. We will be right back. Taking a quick break from our podcast, I wanted to let you know about our life application program that we have for churches and nonprofits in the area that are trying to find programming that they can use in case... Uh, in case the corona shuts you down and you're not able to get in, you go to spiritualwarfareunit.com, you click on our episodes, and you can check out our programs for as little as $29.99 a month to make sure that we're still getting the word out to those people that need it. Now, back to the program. Good. All right, welcome back to the Warrior's Way. Our warrior this week is Teresa Hurley from Catholic Charities. Again, uh, your um, local charity website is CCSGC. 
So tell everybody what that is. Catholic Charities. Shiawassee, Genesee County. So we serve both Shiawassee and Genesee counties. Yeah, that's a lot of words. <laughs> I know it is. That's right. why it's CCSGC. CCSGC.org. Mm -hmm. All right. So so people can go to that website if they're looking to get help, if they want to donate time or volunteer, they can exactly. get all those things done. They also have a local number if you want to just do the number real quick. It's an 810-233-9950. It's 810-232-9950. Two three two, two three two, two three two. All right. Nine nine five zero. All right. So, um, if you want to go and check out how to subscribe or donate to their website, all right. So you had just graduated, which made you what eighteen? I was a young one. I was seventeen when I graduated, but I was yeah. Yeah, September, I was seventeen so. when I went to the military. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So, and you decided to go help disabled people, which I find really interesting because that's like an adult move. Well, you know, yeah. honestly, it was it, maybe selfishly at the time, it was a full-time job. My dad had said, either you go to school or you go to school, work full-time. I didn't right. have a choice. And oh, and that's just a job you found. That was one oh, that okay. found, but it was, it made sense to me. I mean, again, my mom was an MS patient, so I found myself helping there. Okay. So it just seemed like an, a natural transition to go to helping other people. All right. So you work there and then, um, you, you took one semester off, you said, so that mm -hmm. means you went to school. All right, where did you go? I went to U of M Flint. Okay. And uh, what was your major? Uh, communications, English really? minor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And did you do four, five, six? I did three and a half years. Three and a half. So you're yeah, smart. I went, I went spring and summer and just. Oh, full, full year. Yeah, I got it out of the way. Really? I was never a school person. Was there anything in that three and a half years that like really molded like your personality or gauge you into who you are and what you're doing now? Uh, again, I think it's just the natural tendencies of the way I grew up. I mean, we mm. were, came from a family that we always had to help each other, you know, one way or another. So mm -hmm. um, I think that was mostly it. Um, and then I found myself volunteering. I love to volunteer. So I... Did you do that in high school? I Not in high school. I was, oh. you know, again, it was like, I worked in high school, though. I started right. working when I was 15. I worked at Ben Franklin's in Genesee. Wow. Yeah, I was 15 years old. I made $2.10. Yeah, see, back then when we were kids, the boys always did uh, paper routes. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. so I was... Biking it, at but you have to be living in the city to do yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. And we were always, we were always biking it because you know how you say, well, yeah, it's normal that we do that. I know families that had family members that were disabled, and they ran away from that as fast as they could and get away from mm -hmm. it because they didn't want anything to do it. They didn't want the responsibility of it. So there's something about your personality there that 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 formed to that, which is different from other people who, who have come back from it. So so that that's like a DNA thing. From, from, your, from your parents, you know, maybe your dad's personality. My, yeah, my dad was definitely always working bingo and helping out wherever he could. He still does. The man is 86 years old. He still walks every day and still gets out and helps wherever he can. Does he really? Yeah. Because I can see you being like a daddy's girl for for sure. Well, yeah, I, I would think so <laughs> more so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you say that like, duh, but that's not always no, the case, you know, right? I, I look like, at it like my sister and my dad are like, that's my dad's little girl, you know, and uh -huh. I was the middle child, and you know about the middle child. Yeah, sure. our job is to make sure that everybody else yeah. gets what they want, and we get put in the background. <laughs> I understand how that, that's what makes us good communicators, yeah, right? right? Being a middle child myself, I understand. Yeah. But it, it, it's like we get good at networking at early yeah, ages. Yeah, we right? do. We get yeah. to play it. Like, you got to ask for that because mom will yeah, say yes here's to what, you. How are you? How, we're going to help you. Yeah. What is it that you want? We're going to get you there. But what you got to do is you're going to have to take care of this situation, and I got your back. Don't exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. it. All right. So you're going to – you are majored in communications in three and a half years, which is amazing. So like you said, that makes you a smarty pants. No, just in a hurry. Really? <laughs> I just, really, I guess you would have finished on time if you wouldn't have took the semester off. Right. right? So same yeah. thing. Yeah. All right. Was there a particular group of people you want to go through college with, or is just you? I want to get it done. I just wanted to get it done. Uh, yeah. I just, um, I again, I'm not a, I'm not an excellent student, but I, I'm a good student, and I just didn't enjoy it. And but when I found my niche in communications, yeah, it was then it was game on. Like I didn't enjoy it either, and I, I wasn't a good student. I was not a good student. And I didn't enjoy it. Well, yeah. I had a lot of fun in college, though, too. So Okay, define, define fun. Were you a social person, a very social person? Yeah, there was a group of people that always, once you get into your major, you're always kind of with those people in all the classes. Okay. And so you find those similar interests. And I was one of two girls that was in this group of 
guys and we would always, we would wait in line to get the U of M Flint or we, U of M Flint got a certain amount of um, football tickets. Oh. So we would have to wait in line so that we were one of the first people to get them. So then we would um, be able to have them for the season. So we would do that. And then we would all go to the football games together. So it really? was a lot of fun. Now oh, are yeah. you friends with any of those people now? Uh, no, through Facebook, a couple, but that's it. And I'll see them around. Like life know. happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So in any of those experiences that like, Put you in there because the thing that I find interesting is that you have a heart for volunteering, and like it was almost put in there through your dad's work ethic of his expectation of you guys as kids. Oh, I would think am so. I, am I feeling yeah, that? Yeah, but right? also my faith. I, and, you know, when you go through a Catholic school, you're always talking to about, you know, what God wants you to do and yeah. always remaining open to, you know, that conversation, you know, and you, you, people call it, oh, it's a coincidence or, oh yeah, that happened three times. And it's like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't look at those as coincidence. Those are, those are signs and you yep. should be paying attention to those. I agree. Now, I have to ask because I asked everybody who went to get any ruler moments with the, uh, um, with the nuns. I, no, I got called a ten cent dish though. A ten cent dish. Please explain that. <laughs> that was our principal. I don't even want to say her name, but That's it was fine. out of St. Mary's, and she would come in and she would go, "You girls are just ten cent dishes," and we're like. What does that mean? Does that mean worthless or above little I, value? Like, I don't know what that means, you know, and my, you know, we'd go home. And it's probably was, good you don't know what it means, I know, right? I know. I think she meant like we were cheap. Like she was, honestly, I think she meant it like, you know, we were, you know, because we were talking to the boys, you know, so it's like we're 10 cent dishes. We're cheap. Oh, because, you know, we were easy having, to come by and all that. Yeah, cause because they would you have were, our desks all separated and yeah. you couldn't touch another yeah. desk. And because God forbid you. And all the girls were on one side of the room and all the boys yeah. were on another. And if you were out in the playground and you were having a conversation with one of the boys, you were a 10 cent dish. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause how old are you in that? Episode? Oh, gosh. It would be grade school. You're you're talking like sixth grade. I don't even know what that is anymore. 12? I'm not saying that's 11? judgmental. <clears throat> I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> just like yeah. those kind of things. Well, no. Yeah. You can just brush it off, right? Oh, yeah. That's so crazy. Oh, yeah. But those were some really good times. Really good time. We had so much fun. As All you right. Know. So you graduated college at 21? Mm -hmm. Yes. 21. And so what happened? After that, did you go right into a job? Did you take any no, because if you if you 1991 is when I graduated, and it was um, uh, a huge recession, and there were not a whole lot of jobs. There was um, not. So I again started volunteering. I started volunteering at the food bank of Eastern Michigan, and helping Love those guys. By the way, mm -hmm, I do yeah. too. And um, uh, started there as like helping in their marketing. They were just a baby nonprofit at yep. the time, and. Um, and I also started working as a bartender at Chi Chi's. And so I was trying to help make ends meet. And from there, I became their marketing manager. And then I just- they food, food The bank. food bank, okay. yes. And so I've stuck, I stuck with them for about a year and a half. And then my whole career is pretty much centered around nonprofits. No kidding. All right. So, so you did food bank for a year and a half. So food bank is a group that, that gets food and then you can volunteer time and you get food in exchange, right? Or groups get yeah, food to so, be able to distribute. Right, so pantries right. can volunteer, right. and then it works as a credit towards their right. their bottom so line. So this is where the church is and nonprofits get all their stuff. Like, it's a really great organization. Mm -hmm. I've been exactly. trying to get those cats on here because I just like what they do, and I want to help them. Oh, I'll just get like you connected you guys. if you can't get through somebody. Yeah, I just I want to get them on here just to go, I love what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Same with you because, like, the crazy part was when we were doing COVID, and they're like, you know, I was like, where, where do we get food? I was like, I, I, I don't know. I like, because it's in your day-to-day -day function. How many times you're like, oh, I got to handle this. Right. And you just, you don't realize you need the nonprofits and they're like invisible because you guys are so busy doing your own thing. You don't get the chance to go, hey, how are you? I'm a, here's my card. And we're going right. you know, to, that doesn't happen because you got your group, your bubble. And then outside of that. So when COVID happened, everybody needed help. And it was like, you guys came out of the woodworks and you guys already had a preset functioning setup, which was great. Right. And using that. And it was, it was amazing. You guys, it was, you were so good. I keep telling people, I told you this already. It's a mascot. I was like, man, if you're doing distribution, you should check out all Catholic Jerry's Jews. Cause it's like, boom, boom, boom. Here's the process. Right. It's, it's like you guys have been giving out food since, I don't know, the first century or something. It, it, well, it's yeah, weird. it's 81 years for us. And that's how yeah. it started was. I read this book somewhere back in the day and some guy, beard, long hair. Like everybody, <laughs> something or another. 
<laughs> something. Like, anyway, he, he said we're supposed to feed people and yeah. stuff. And, the and, loaves and the fishes. There we yeah. are. <laughs> something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a big seafood guy. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyways, you graduated. So you, you went right to the food market and or food bank. And then you were there for two years. That so puts you at... 23 to no, 24. Look at you. We can well, this is, I want this story. So, yeah. so the, because most people have an event that happens to get them into volunteering. You, you just kind of walked into it and were preparing for doing this because your mindset brought you there, which I think is, is, is set from your dad's work ethics. I'm trying to just figure out how that I, I think you're right. Works. There's a, you know, when you find in the nonprofit world, people, you have to be, I don't want to say special, but you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. You know, if you're, yeah. if you're very um, career minded and you want to climb the corporate ladder and, and you this know, this is and, not it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, you're, you're doing, you know, my job is my job, but, and if anybody else needs help, you just step in. That's yeah. just what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And, and you're a sponge and you, and you got to mm -hmm. give that out, but you got to refill too. Right. You know? So, mm -hmm. all right. So then what happened after, uh, so I actually, I'll just digress, and I tried to go into nursing school. I was going to kind of flip channels and go into nursing. Right. And, Did you get um, wore out? Like some uh, people get wore out. No, I don't think it was that at all. It's okay. just, it was just another way to another expand. Vein. Yeah. Okay. And I had already gone through my own degree, so they had an accelerated program, tried to do nursing, and mm -hmm. I should have kept going, but I didn't for personal reasons I don't want to explain. And then... Um, it, they used to have a plan at Wayne State where you gave them 18 months. Mm -hmm. They paid you your whole tuition. I mm -hmm. was accepted to that program, and I walked away, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't have. But you, then you owed them three years after that. Yeah, yeah. And and I thought, well, I'm going to become a nurse lawyer. And wow. once, once that la did not happen, I went back to the world. All right, hold on a world. second. You went from nonprofit to nurse to nurse lawyer. Yeah. What, what What's the process of your mind right there? Like oh, that's I like just, very specific, right? Right. But I was always told I'm a good arguer. So I can, oh, I, I believe that. I, I believe that. <laughs> it just seemed like a natural. So that process, like, well, if that's something I good at, then naturally I would be good at this. And that's how your mind was looking at uh, it. I just, I actually wanted to go to a nursing where I could help people with, um, were not treated well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be the attorney that yeah, helped yeah. the people that did not get gotcha. the care they should have received. Right. So, so now you're trying to. Be an attorney. What happened? To Nothing. I didn't pursue either one of those, and I just stayed in the nonprofit world. Okay. So, how long was that process of thought? Right. Uh, I was. I took off about a year and a half. Okay. And I was working in a doctor's office, trying to go to nursing school, and then um, when that stopped, I came back to Flint, and I had worked for the American Red Cross. Okay. Um, and I at that time I was down in the Detroit area. I was working living in Oak Park, and then I came back to the Flint area and. Went back to the American Red Cross and did that. I did All right. Yeah. Hold on. Before we get in there, it sounds like we got what I call a skipper. So you got a uh -huh. bunch of little little tweeners. Before we get in there and we get to the good stuff, we're going to take our quick break. Okay. And when we come back, we are going to get a couple of funny stories from our guests about mm -hmm. things that have happened. If you have not gone out to ccsgc.org, ccs sgc.org to check out what they're doing. Please go do that. If you haven't hit spiritualwarfareunit.com to be one of our people to help other people, please hit that. We will be right back. I'm really impressed with the teachings that Isaac has been bringing to us as this is all based from Proverbs. I like it because it's simple and it doesn't matter who you are. It's very easy to to understand and apply to your life. You know, it points out, you know, my bad parts and, you know, but it's showing me how to do the good parts. And, you know, I'm trying to apply that and, you know, make a better life for myself because I'm tired of where I've been. It's impacted a lot of the guys as they continue to talk and ask questions after the meetings as they uh, speak to one another regarding the meeting and the messages and the topics that are being brought up, which are down to earth topics of situations and things that we live with on day to day basis. He takes the Bible and he breaks it down into simple terms and uh, where you can understand. And like I said before, a lot, sometimes a lot of churches, even the Salvation Army sometimes, we start using these big words that people don't understand, like even saying someone got saved. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean when you say someone got saved? And it's accepting Jesus into your heart. So it's like words like that that we use that people don't understand. It's, it's, it's just very interesting how he points out, you know, the different things of, you know, the sin part. And then he comes back with the, you know, how to make it better. And it's just, it's, it, he just points it out. It's there. 
you know, I didn't know all this stuff was in there, but now that he's pointing this out, it's like, wow, you know, I guess if you really dig, dig, dig into the Bible, you find these things. This is a daily moral standards that we can live by that the teachings are coming from. And honestly, uh, we can take verse by verse as what he's done, and pretty much he's done the hard work for us and now laying it out so that we have an easier understanding. There are some people who don't like to be in Bible classes, but this one has, seems to get their attention. So people that are talking about breaking the rules use their fingers to speak to each other. And that's what gangs do to communicate from point A to point B. It's almost like this has been in the Bible for 2,000 years and people feel like it's a new thing. That is unbelievable, isn't it? That things that are happening in your life today are in here from 2,000 years ago. That's very weird. All right, welcome back to the Warrior's Way. Our warrior this week is Teresa Hurley from Catholic Charities. Their website again, ccsgc.org, or their phone number is 810-232-9950 if you want to go and check out what they're doing. All right, so you were just getting into uh, what kind of tweener jobs in between college, but before we finish that up, I always ask for a couple of funny stories, and I remember you saying something about your dad, and then that's all I remember. Well, I am going to actually skip that one. I'm going <laughs> to tell you another one. Okay. Um, so my family is, my dad's, uh, my grandparents, um, my paternal grandparents are from Ireland. Okay. And my dad and decided when he retired, he was going to take the whole family to Ireland, and so he bought our flights, and then it's kids and stuff and mm -hmm. our, our significant others, we went. And this was before children. And we were at downtown, um, <laughs> we were at downtown Killarney and there was this beautiful church and we're like, okay, well we should go, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're here. And it's really interesting because it was set up like a Coliseum and I've never okay. seen a Catholic church like that. So just inside think, the church. Yes. Okay. So you're, you're ch it, almost like you were in the bleacher section surrounding the altar. It was really something I've never experienced before in my life. Okay. And so we're already there. And because my mom is not able to handle stairs very well, we're at the very, like we're at the top. Yeah. And so you can see things all of a sudden you hear a bell ring and, and the priest practically ran from the back of the church to the altar. It was just the fastest. Like entrance. he was running into yeah, like, into the you, ring for a fight. <laughs> it was. And if you've ever seen, you know, here, you know, you get the song and it's like yeah, all yeah. four verses and then they, yeah. they're up on the altar. Well, this guy was on the altar in like 10 seconds flat. And so we're all like looking at each other, like, where are we? Yeah. What did we walk in? Little are guy we... comes out. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> like, are we sure we're in a Catholic church? <laughs> I mean, are we in the right faith? And so we're already all like, kind of like, just what is happening? And yeah. this lady in front of us had this trench coat on and all of a sudden she sneezed and it was so loud. Like everybody kind of looked our way because you're in this Coliseum, right? So it oh, echoes. No. And, but when she sneezed, something flew. Like we oh. were like, what is happening? And I'm like leaning out of what would be my pew, but more like a bleacher. And I could not stop laughing. And I look over at my sister and now I've got my finger over my nose because I know I'm going to like howl laughing. And she starts laughing. My brother starts laughing. Our significant others are all laughing. Because you're laughing. Yeah, because this lady... It was her teeth Ooh. that flew out of her mouth when she sneezed. <laughs> and they landed, they landed like four steps down. So when she had to go get them, I'm leaning out and I'm like, <laughs> she did not. And she turns around and she looked it up and she put them back in. And we tell me she didn't smile. Oh my oh gosh. God. Don't tell me she smiled. I'm she put telling them back you, in. it was the funniest thing. <laughs> my mind is seeing this right now. And it's just like, yeah, she sneezed and they were gone. And I was like, what was that? You know, I'm looking over and she picks them up and oh my gosh. Apparently they don't fix it and forget oh. it. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, you it, it was like probably a good five, ten minutes where we could not stop laughing. Like we're all just kind of shaken. And that that priest, he's got I I got a view of everywhere. That that's <laughs> that one got me crying. I cannot because this it reminds me of this story. So <laughs> so my mom used to take care of um older people with uh, dementia, right? Okay. She would go in and she'd be the person to get their meals together and, and bathe them and do all that, right? I, I forget whatever it's called. And so she used to take us over to this one lady's house. She was very nice. She was 80 something and, and she had de- dementia and, uh, and kind of the same scenario. Uh, my mom had given her something to eat and we had lunch and, and she comes out and she's like, where's your teeth? And the lady's like, I don't know. And she's like, and it's like, oh, no. So my mom's like, we have to find her teeth. And I'm like, oh, God, right? Like, like, <laughs> this is like days. the worst hunt, <laughs> you know, of all time. So you're looking around, right? Why did and, I have to come and, today? And, <clears throat> right. And I was like, mom, it's really great to spend quality time right. together. And uh, so lo and behold, we're sitting, I'm sitting there going in my head through lunch. Like, what did this, what did this lady eat for lunch? It's like, man. If I had bad teeth, what would I eat, you know? So I'm starting to look for soft food, right? So I go in there, and there's this huge oh. bucket of grade-A cottage cheese, right? And I was like, hmm. You did, opened it. Oh, oh yeah. Right now, there. I need you to put together cottage cheese and dentures, okay? <laughs> and, 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 and know that they were open, right? <laughs> So it looked like there was like, no spoon stuck in the middle. Was it there? looked like she went oh. and put it in there. So it looked like a mouth was coming out of the cottage cheese, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, right? I was I was ten, I think, twelve, something. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh, you want to come over and hang out? I was like, no, no, no. no. I'm busy doing homework and mm-hmm. uh, studying and praying. Yep. And <laughs> I wasn't doing any of those things, but I would <laughs> rather have done those things. And I, like, God bless my mom and that poor lady. But, oh, oh. oh. Well, you're a genius to look in there. That would have been the last place. I well, would I was like, if I, my teeth hurt, what would I eat? I would eat cottage cheese, right? But i tell you one thing I don't eat. <clears throat> yeah, right. I don't I eat don't cottage cheese. You. Like, oh. That visual. Right? Yeah. Sticks with you. And that's the part that was, because it, like, in my head, I got the slow mo of the spit going out uh-huh. of her mouth while they're just projectile. like, da, 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 da. oh, yeah. yeah. I know that's not happening, but in my head, oh, yeah. The teeth are chattering. Chasing you? Yeah, because it's funny. Like a Pac Man. <laughs> like a <laughs> Pac Man. All right, so we were, we were at your, <clears throat> we were at your mid to late 20s, you're trying to decide to do with your career. You started doing stuff, didn't do it, did it, didn't do it, mm-hmm. right? Nursing, nursing, Lauren, reasons to do it. All right, so you're 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 mid to late twenties right now, mm-hmm. and you decided to go into what nonprofit next? I went from actually um, American uh, Red Cross. I went professional. I went to Domino's for just a very short time. Mm-hmm. And the pizza then, place. Pardon me. Yeah, the pizza place. Okay. <clears throat> and then right. from there, I went to you use um, the word professional. I, 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 it's weird. <laughs> I wasn't going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually did another short stint um, with uh, Chrysler Financial. Okay. Um, but then I got pregnant and I had a difficult pregnancy, so mm. I had to leave and then um, made some choices to made it work out that I could stay home with my kids for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So what's, how long was that time for? Uh, about five years, six years I was home. And uh, then um, I started working part-time around the five-year mark. And did you, were you doing volunteer work then? Yeah, I was. I was uh, working for the kids' schools um, at Holy Family. And then I... What were you um, doing as far as volunteer work? Uh, helping them raise money for the school. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So well, marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. And then wherever in the classrooms, wherever they needed me, I would, right. you know, try to help. So how long did you do that? I did that for about four years. And then I worked for part-time for the shelter of Flint. Um, All right. And then from there, because I was working part-time at Holy Family, and then I was working part-time at shelter of Flint, I ended up getting a full-time job with the American Cancer Society. Okay. And And you made that contact through all these other contacts? I did, actually. Every job I've ever received or ever gotten um, has been through volunteer work. No kidding. Every single one. And you know the thing that I love about volunteer people is they always want to help people. Right. That's my favorite thing about them. Like somebody had asked, "Why why do you do what you do? And I was like, I get to help people that help people. Right. To help people. And they're like, oh, win, win, win. And I'm like, yeah, but it It is, is. Right. 
Like if you're listening, you get to be the person with someone with good news about the fact mm-hmm. that Catholic charity helps them and they do the work and then you tell them and they get the food and then they're going to thank you for it. Like, how's that not a win? Right. right. And it, yeah. And like in this particular case, when I learned about this job, mm-hmm. I actually went to school with um, one of the board members daughters and, and she's the one that recommended me. So mm-hmm. yeah. now did you get married? Not married? Uh, I was married in there and divorced through okay. some of that. So, all right. So that was late twenties, early thirties. Right. All yeah. right. So this was like the uh, <clears throat> late ninety ish. Uh, yeah, it would have been late nineties. Um, yeah, and then I was married till twenty ten, and then I yeah. went on my own. And okay. um, well, yeah. that's super hard time at like twenty eight, two thousand eight through like that depression yeah. hit everybody, right? Yeah. All right. So, how many children? I have two. Two, boy and a girl. I do. My oh. daughter's the oldest. All right, and they're they're grown now. Yes. All right. You said one is a water polo player. Yes, he is for Mercy Hurst in uh, in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay, so he plays and, and, your, too. and your daughter? My daughter is in Traverse City pursuing her respiratory therapy degree through Munson. Wow, that's a Hospital. great area too. I know, right? Yeah, nice so wine she's area. She's working hard and getting herself through school, so she's doing great. Good for her. Yeah. All right, so here, so before we jump in the in the twenties, we're late twenties, early thirties, and you're you're doing the mom. I was a single mom for uh, 12 years. Okay. So you're doing the single mom thing, working at schools, helping the kids, working part-time, mm-hmm. just making it happen. Making it happen. Making it happen, Captain. And then get married, get divorced at 20, 2010. 2010. All right. So that that would put you early 40s? Me? No. Oh, then? Yeah. No, I was just 40. Just 40. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so you're kind of in this transitional part of your life, right? And at that time, were you still working for Holy Family? And, and uh, yeah, that's when I went from having to work two part time jobs to finding my full time jobs. So then, and that's when I went to the American Cancer Society. Okay, and and what is it that they had to be doing? Oh, so I was there. Um, I worked out in the Detroit area initially, and mm-hmm. I did Relay for Life events for them. Mm-hmm. And then um, they're also their um, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer walk that they do. Okay. And then um, shortly after I started there, I ended up getting transferred up to the Flint office. So mm-hmm. that was nice. So that saved me some time driving. Okay. And I was able then to do the same thing up in this community. All right. And how long did you do that? I worked for them for seven years. Seven years. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was like the thing you loved about that? Like if you're going to tell somebody you want to do this, what would be the reason? To do the relay or work for American Cancer Society? Yeah, working for American Cancer Society. Um, I lost my brother to cancer. Okay. So for me, it was just so a personal. So it's a personal passion. Mm-hmm. All right. But what is it about that? Was it because of that passion you loved it? Or is it no, that actually, what got you in and then you really no, loved something? I, my very first week when I started working there, um, yeah. my brother... Uh, is a brain cancer um, patient, and mm-hmm. he had a less than 1% chance of living one year. Mm-hmm. Um, but the American Cancer Society, one of their medicines that they help fund through mm-hmm. research, um, actually kept my brother here for 13 years. Shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. So they're at the very cutting edge, tip to top of oh, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, we could all, there's a, you're going you're gonna to get some people that are going to go, there's a cure for cancer, and people know it, and you get that kind of um, feeling. But I think... I think they are on the cusp of being able to do okay. that, but it does take a lot of research dollars to do it. All right, perfect. That is a perfect spot to take a break. We're going to hit that when we come back. We're going to find out what Catholic Charities is doing, what you're doing now, and catch up with the end of the story. If you have not gone to spiritualwarfareunit.com, please do it now. And if you want to check out what Catholic Charities is doing, ccsgc.org, and we'll be right back. Awesome. I was an addict for six years. I was deeply into heroin and addiction. 2014, a lot of events happened for me. I had lost my sister. Um, My dad was just diagnosed with cancer. I was just kind of in this headspace of being in a mess as it was, and then I was introduced to heroin. I kept it pretty well hidden. There in the beginning, um, a lot of people didn't know that I was using just because I went about my everyday life the same way anybody else would. But what they didn't know behind the scenes is I was using 10 times a day. I'm living out of what I consider a trap house at this point. Um, There's no windows, there's no doors. 
There's no place to stay warm. I had no other way of making money. I was doing things that weren't okay to me. I started prostituting. I was stealing from my loved ones. I was taking my dad's cancer prescriptions and I would take them and I would sell them. I couldn't even contact my daughter in December of that year to tell her Merry Christmas or send her gifts. And it just got to a point where I knew like, I'm either going to get clean or I might as well start planning my own funeral. So for me, it wasn't even just that I needed to stop. Um, my life over the course of six years fell apart. So I met Sarah in 2019. We had a program I was working with with law enforcement officers and uh, I got the call that uh, they had somebody so there I went to meet Sarah. Here's just this happy-go-lucky guy just, oh my God, here's treatment. Here's what you can do, you can change your life around. I'm just kind of sitting there like, oh, okay, what did I get myself into? Like maybe sitting in a cell by myself might have been a better idea because <laughs> at least I don't want to listen to all this. Whenever I see somebody who's willing to go to uh, treatment to try and help with their issue, it's something that I don't make that judgment. I always just try and provide the hope, the encouragement, and the motivation to go to treatment and then hope that it works for them, hope they engage, hope that it's, it's the, the point of life that they're in, that they're ready to make that change. It was a huge wake up call for me. When I'm watching all these people that I used to hang out with, including my husband, get clean before I did. And just watching their lives change so drastically and them becoming so much happier. And I just sat there in this endless abyss of a mess that I caused myself, but I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know how to stay clean. I didn't know how to live my life without substances because I had done it for so long. We, with UCAN and our relationships we have, we can actually get people into multiple treatment facilities. So depending on age, gender, uh, the, the drug of choice, things of that nature, there's certain facilities that maybe have a little bit more of a, of a success rate with certain populations. So we kind of talk through that and then try and place them where we feel is uh, an optimal place to succeed. My husband and I finally got a place together and life has pretty much been good ever since but like the key role of it for me was staying in contact with people. We can't go in and drive in and grab somebody just pull them out like they're drowning. It's a decision they have to make and it's a commitment they have to make and then they have to, to be uh, you know, diligent, determined, dedicated to, to find sobriety. So my husband has two years clean and I have 22 months clean. I will have two years clean on December 21st of this year. Just last month in October, we went back to court. Everything's officially terminated. She's back home with us for good. Yeah, so you can is that conduit. A lot of times people don't know when to or how to or where to go to start looking for services. So we try and promote you can as being the starting point for people to uh, begin the road to navigating recovery. It is more than possible to change your life around. So this program that we have allows law enforcement that if they have somebody that they feel could, could use the opportunity to try and get treatment instead of incarceration, that they would reach out and we could handle it for them. Recovery is possible. Do you want a food bank? Per Julie Bird. All right, welcome back to the Warrior's Way. This is our last segment. We're here with Teresa. She's our Warrior of the Week. And we were just finishing up your story of, of where you're working into the nonprofit. So how did you transfer from where you were and how long was the time, like you said, your early 40s to, to Catholic Charity? So what was that? Uh, in between there, um, I had tried again to go into the corporate world, and mm -hmm. I just know it's not for me. And okay. again, it just... You know, I, and I, I respect people that don't work, you know, that work in the corporate world, and it's not. I mean, truly, I am just one of those people. I love working for a nonprofit. I love supporting an organization that um, helps other people. Every yeah. day my bucket is full when I see that, um, you know, we're providing a meal to somebody, and it just makes what I do worth it. Yeah. Um, so how did you transfer from 
What was the last place we were talking about? Um, we were well, I went from American Cancer Society yeah. to another non, or to another just a regular business, Advanced Physical Therapy Center. Yeah, and I was their community relations manager, and I loved it, but it just wasn't me. Yeah, and how long did you do that? Uh, just about a, two years, year and a half. All right, and then so this puts you in your early forties. Yeah, late forties uh, is where I'm at now. Er, early. Early 40s. Late 40s. Too. 49 and less is early. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, and then, so this would be 2016, 2017. I started, um, yeah, I started there with 2017. And oh. then, um, but again, it was just contingency. So I did it about two years and I left there in um, February of 2020 when I started at Catholic Charities. All right. So, like when in 2020? February. I started three weeks Because it hit March. COVID. Right before COVID. Oh my gosh, that had to be nuts. Right. It was. So you're trying to learn a new organization and, uh, you <laughs> and know, the world stopped. Yes. <laughs> and, and I didn't even get to know my coworkers. You yeah. know, so it was, um, but what I did learn in that time frame, I want to tell you this story cause it's a really good one. Mm -hmm. I was there my very first week and it was Valentine's week. And so we have some schools sometimes that will um, do things like decorate placemats for, yeah. for our clients who come in for a meal. Okay. And so there was all these Valentine um, placemats all over the table and they were done by St. John's and Fenton. And they was, they were just so cool. And it says, God loves you. We love you. And all these little kids handwriting and stuff. And it was mm -hmm. just so precious. And little Caesars had decided to bring up their um, semi where they can actually cook pieces in the back. Wow. And for the very first time, apparently, um, we were invited as staff to enjoy lunch there. Okay. Um, and it was, I guess, again, I'm only there three days. And yeah, you're yeah. like, I may have never done that. Yeah. So we got to go downstairs and have lunch. And I get down there and I sit down and I'm talking to some people that I didn't know, obviously, the coworkers. Yeah. And these two gentlemen sit down next to me and um, they were clients mm -hmm. and they had hats on. And um, here we are just talking and laughing and enjoying our meal. And I look over at these two gentlemen and they were probably 70s, light, you know, younger 70s. And they took their hats off and they bowed their head and they said a prayer out loud. Mm -hmm. And they said, thank you, Catholic Charities, for providing my meal for me again today. Mm -hmm. And I thought, shame on me. I just come down here for the first time thinking, oh, this is really cool. I didn't say thank you. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. And these guys. Leave it to the old fellows to get you yeah. there, right? <laughs> and that they were. And then I heard them over talk, you know, talking, they're like, yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, it's like, it's funny. Life is funny. You know, I was a barber and now suddenly I can't even afford my own rent. Yeah. You know? So everybody's got a story. Yeah. And that one made me pause and realize that, geez, Teresa, I don't take things for granted. Don't yeah, right. take things for granted. So, so you work in there, COVID hits. And your job is what? Now, when I called you, I was told it's the the fun department. <laughs> fun development. <laughs> fun development. Because when I was like, do what? Like when I have to pronounce my H's when I'm speaking, <laughs> you have my full and undivided attention. Yeah, Who came up with that? Well, it's always, you're so, oh, it should always be fun when you're trying to help people. <laughs> yeah, and see, you say that like it's normal, but most people's experience is not, oh, I get to go to my fun department today yeah. and do fun things. It's like well, they have a little guy in the back and he's like, oh, we, oh, <laughs> oh, that's like most people. Right. And you're like, oh, the fun development. So please explain that part. Well, my job is to share our story. Um, okay. And I find that, you know, I fun. find that fun. You know, mm. when I can tell people that every day I can assure you that we are making a difference in this community. And right. and I mean that because there are people that are um, that are struggling all the time that, right. you know, you might have a you might have a full time job. And but you might be that single mom like I was and you have two kids and you just can't afford a meal. Right. And, you know, you're just barely, you know, and you're not, it's not, you, your pride doesn't have to take a hit on it. There's no. a bunch of people in that bucket. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, well, I don't want to do it. Just do it. Like, just do it. We're not going to tell anybody. We promise. Yeah. Right? It's right. Yeah. So you guys do all kinds of stuff and you're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So what's, what, what is an event that you got coming up that people could check out in in the Genesee County area? Uh, well, on June 14th, we are doing um, uh, Feed feed the Community, feed and the community. it's going to yep. be from noon until 2 p.m. in the parking lot of Center for Hope, and which is located at 812 Route Street. And there'll be uh, food trucks there, 
And there'll be other vendors. And I say vendors because we like to provide other services. So we yeah. do a lot of cooperative. Um, so give me an example of other vendors. Um, you, we might have the Genesee Health Department there um, who, for people who maybe need another COVID shot or their booster or something like that. Okay. Um, we'll have uh, Genesee Health Systems or HAP or mm -hmm. um, other people out there who are uh, maybe giving away uh, like maybe a goodie bag of uh, essential um, mm -hmm. items that you might want to, um, you know, might need for your house. Mm -hmm. um, those are kind of the cooperations that we do because there's people out there who suddenly need health insurance or they need, um, they need counseling and they don't know where to go. Well, we'll have people yeah. out there talking to them. So you do well. like depressive counseling? Oh, we do. Maybe. We do everything across the gamut. So our substance right. use, um, we also do um, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, we do family. Um, we do recovery. Um, okay. So if, so if they called this 810-232-9950 and they needed it or mm -hmm. family number, they just give them that number, they called somebody and they hook them up with someone? Yes, absolutely. Right. And, and it's then no we cost. Right. Well, right. there is, I mean, they'll take your insurance information, but we'll work with you. Okay. Um, and then the other one is, you know, those, that same service is available in Shiawassee County. Okay. Um, so we have uh, counselors out there as well. All right. So, and I'm, we're actually moving to Shiawassee County. I got some friends of mine that work oh, nice. out there and, and we're moving out. We'll talk about that after the show. Okay. And, uh, but you have, uh, not, one of the things I find is cool. They have a men's warehouse and they have, if they have jackets that, aren't selling or whatever, they donate them. And they, you guys give those to people who are like going to interviews and stuff. Sure. Right? That's called our work ready room. Yeah. And so that we, is an amazing know, thing because I got to watch this cat walk in who looked like my producer with the, the beard and, uh -huh. the, and, and dirty and smelly and ugly, not uh -huh. like my producer. <clears throat> and, uh, and he come out and I was like, man, like looked sharp. Right? right. And that's where I was like, I got a buddy of mine. that's a barber, man. I wonder if he cut the hair. Right. And then you guys got like a medical, like a full medical like facility there too, right? Right, there is, and that's um, Hamilton Healthcare is upstairs. So that's we, what it was. Yeah, so yeah. they're not. They're also a nonprofit, but mm -hmm. they, you know, if we we work together mm -hmm. um, with some of their clients, need our help with clothing, like you're saying, or yeah. basic necessities. And then vice versa, if we have somebody who needs to be seen, we, we work with them. Right. So you have because this is the list that I know, right? Okay. You have. Uh, Prison jail reentry with reconnection. Right. You have mental health, physical health. You have uh, mental facility, uh, medical facility. People can drop clothes. Like there was a mountain, like a mountain right. of clothes that was like like a store, and mm -hmm. they rack them, and people just come in and get them. Right. Right. Hold on, I'm not done yet. No, good. Right. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm impressed. I try to do my homework, right? <laughs> but this is what was so impressive was uh -huh. about you guys hit most of the gamut, job training, uh -huh. right? And working with uh, the state with the with filling out the application things and oh, all that. Oh, we're the one-stop housing in the yeah. community, correct? And uh, and then the housing, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you guys, you guys click the gamut on all the things, and this is why, like I tell people, if if you want to uh, look at how to do something, because Catholic Charities was such a help during COVID and distribution of food, just the food section of that. And we were able to disseminate like a million pounds of food to sheriff's support and direction, right? Mm -hmm. We were kind of quarterbacking that. Through, That's awesome, yeah. It was, it was nuts. It yeah. was buku bonkers. Yeah. And, but we were able to do it and it came together like, like that. And in that case, that was, you know, we, we and you were, just started. <laughs> yeah, we, I just started and I found myself learning very quickly. But the other yeah. thing that we also do is, um, you mentioned reconnections, but we also have our f offender success. And that is a little bit different in that we help, um, offenders, um, post incarcerated individuals find a place to, um, rest their head when they've, mm -hmm. when they've left. Yeah. And also that goes back to the job training. And then we also have foster care and adoption. Mm -hmm. um, so we oversee that in the community and we currently have, I think we're at 70 children. Outstanding. Uh huh. See, and this is amazing. Like I said, if you have not gone to ccsgc.org and check it out, there's a place. If you want to help, best thing for depression is help somebody else that has less. Absolutely. Right? Thank you, Teresa, so much for coming on. Their number again is 810-232-9950. I want to thank Catholic Charities for coming on. You guys do awesome work. I look thank forward you. to partnering again. Thank you for stopping in the Warriors Way, checking out You Can Studios. You guys will see you next week. Do you have a nonprofit in your area that's doing a lot of work that people should know about? 
Feel free to contact Spiritual Warfare Unit at 810-715-9319, and we would love to have them on to see what good they're doing in the community and find out their story. Thank you so much.